Good afternoon. It is March 10th, Dollywood season pass holder preview day. Tomorrow, March 11th is opening day. And just like the obsessive ghost enthusiast I am, I came over here the second that my classes ended today. So I only have about two hours here today, but I'll be back again tomorrow for public opening day. Since it is my home park and I visit here all the time, I'm going to be checking out what kind of changes have been made to the park over the off season. If you want to see more of my experience this weekend, I'll have a separate vlog video as well. So I just parked. Let's go check some stuff out. So yes, I am walking away from the park. I'm going to show you all some of what they've done over here with the parking lot. So the parking lot got a complete uh, overhaul last year. They completely reworked the entire thing. But unfortunately, due to some rain and other weather condition stuff, they were barely able to get it ready for cars to drive on by the time opening day arrived last year. But this off season, they've gone ahead and finished some things. So let's see where I can walk. Uh, to be safe. Uh, coming down this hill towards the exit, um, this used to just be kind of open. They just put up some temporary balusters, whatever the heck they're called, to stop people from running through there. But you can see they've gone ahead and put up actual curves, dirt, and planted some grass. And you'll see that kind of throughout the entire parking lot while you're driving in. Uh, they've just, you know, actually finished and put grass and turf down and everything. So overall, it just looks a lot nicer than last year where it was very obvious that a lot of areas were only like half completed by the time the park opened. Not theme park related, but Dream More Resort got new buses or Dollywood got new buses, or at least they repainted their old little trolley buses that go to the resorts. So you just saw that one drive by. They used to just be Dream More Resort themed on the side, but now they just generally say Dollywood Resorts on them. Of course, because they're opening a second hotel later this year, so those shuttles will be not just for Dream More anymore. Dream More anymore, that sounds funny. As we're leaving the parking lot here, there's this new sign for accessibility. Cool. All right, so now we've entered this little entrance plaza before you get into the gate to the park. And you can see we have a new permanent, or at least semi-permanent building for the wheelchair or ECD rentals. Those used to be just out of a tent. And park security also used to be out of a tent for several tents. And now they have a permanent structure for security as well, as well as all this was just, you know, pavement last year. So they've sectioned off some areas, put out some flower pots and trees and stuff. So that's all certainly nice to see. And benches too. Benches, yeah. I, those were not here. <laughs> it was literally just a big asphalt walk through. And now that we are free security here, this area, which was also literally just asphalt last year, also has some new trees, flower pots, benches, etc., etc., set up as well as some white poles with banners. So it's not perfect, but definitely looks a lot nicer than what we were looking at last year. I also think those flagpoles might be new because I feel like I would have remembered seeing them before and I don't, so. In addition to the maps, they now have these pamphlets that will kind of tell you about stuff in Dolly Parton's life that has to do with some of the attractions here. So that's kind of cool. I'll take one of these. All right, so here's one of the biggest changes in the park this year. So this used to be Chasing Rainbows, the Dolly Parton story, which was a Dolly Parton museum, a museum of her whole life. And as you can see, it's gone. It was closed last year. They said um, that was going to be a temporary closure, but evidently not, because this year, as you can see, they've stripped the sign off the building put up a construction fence and everything. And you can also see her home on wheels motorhome that used to be here that you could do a walkthrough of. It's also completely gone, disappeared. And that was still open last year. You could still walk in that last year, even though the museum was closed, but it's gone. The museum's been stripped out. We knew some of the inside had been gutted because they've been using it for some seasonal stuff in there, but it looks like they're gonna be gutting the whole thing. I feel like having a Dolly Parton museum at Dolly Parton's theme park kind of makes sense. So hopefully we see this attraction revived in some way somewhere else in the park. I walked through here once um, two years ago and it was a pretty nice experience. So it's a shame that it's gone. So it was actually mentioned at a 
pass holder and media event earlier in the day that I was unable to attend but found out later that this building is going to be redeveloped into a new Dolly Parton Museum called the Dolly Parton Experience, which while residing in this same building will, from what I understand, be a completely ground up, brand new museum, modernized, etc, etc. So it's just worth noting there that yes, the museum will be coming back, even though it's not chasing rainbows, it'll be a new museum, but that's coming in 2024 in this building. We'll see what happens with her tour bus though, since that's now been removed from the park. It's actually sitting next to a maintenance building in the parking lot, so they still have it on site. I just, I don't know if they're gonna bring it back or not. We shall see. So worst change in my humble opinion, for me anyway, here at Lightning Rod, is as you can see, the single rider line has been removed. We used to enter through here for single rider. Not anymore. We gotta use the standby. Yeah, so as you can see, they took the sign down for single rider. And there's just a bench where the single rider line used to be. Very strange. So now the change is over here by the priority lot entrance. You can see that the building for uh, stroller rentals and stuff used to be right there. Um, it's gone, so yeah, bye. Opens up the space a little bit more. Looks kind of weirdly empty, uh, but all that stuff is in here now in this building. So, yeah. Check out Big Bear Mountain as I come around the corner here. They've made a lot of progress since I've last been here in Rosers. <laughs> All right, this is day two, obviously, because I'm parked somewhere different. But at the very back of a Splash Country lot, they've kind of poured a new gravel parking lot here. Painted lines and everything, but it's all gravel. I assume they'll come pave this over at some point. This may have been here last year. I just don't remember it. So there you go. There's a new overflow parking lot next to the old overflow parking lot because parking is a big issue in Hollywood these days. <laughs> so here's a really interesting change right here is where Lumberjack Jam Band used to be. But you can see they went ahead and just filled in that area, poured a new curb, and made this just a path without that for some reason. But worry not, it's not gone, it just moved. It has simply moved up here by the entrance to Thunderhead at the top of Timber Canyon. Kind of a weird change in my opinion because in its old location, it was one of the only things down on this path that was interesting to look at and it was kind of off to the side so it wasn't blocking anybody walking through but they moved it up here to a very congested area where it kind of gets in the way a little more not really sure why they did that but whatever more interesting change up in timber canyon is thunderhead retrack again so for the past couple of years dollywood has been working closely with gci the ride's original manufacturer to retrack portions of the ride and this year it seems to be the biggest retrack so far. We hear that this is the last year it's going to get a retrack for a little while, which is kind of unfortunate. But I'll try to get some good views. Everything from the S-Bend all the way through the station is retracked, and everything from the station to the end was retracked last year, and it's still running pretty much like brand new. Literally the only slightly bumpy spots on Thunderhead is just the drop into this one turn, but even that runs smoother than 99% of wooden coasters out there, so... Thunderhead is literally running better than ever now. So you should be able to see because the new wood is so much fresher than the old wood. Right at the bottom of this turnaround is where the new track work starts. Runs all the way up over that S-Bend there. So if we get a little higher, you can see I showed you to the end of the S-Bend as we come off of the S-Bend, up onto that hill, and then into that turnaround. All brand new fresh wood there as well. And you can even see the wood coming out of the station flyby. It still looks a little fresh from last year's retrack as well. Absolutely love it. So 
here's the area that wraps around the cube that has all been fully retracked. You should be able to see that fresh wood on all of it. Really awesome because this area used to be oh, a little bit bumpy. It hurt you a little bit. But now it's very smooth. You can see all of this retracking work, just like past years, is the full five stack of wood replacement. None of this partial retrack stuff. Literally full replacement of all the track. And even you can see replaced some of the structural boards that need to be replaced. So it's really nice to see Valerie taking such good care of this ride, especially since so many parks these days are just letting their wooden coasters uh, rot. So Till and Harvest, besides blowing out barbecue smell and smoke out the back, Apparently got a complete gutting and reconfiguring of its interior this year, which is interesting because it's the newest ground up location at the park for food. It just opened in 2019. Actually, it wasn't until like June or July of 2019. So it's pretty weird that they reconfigured it already this quickly. Now, as you can see, this whole area in here used to be like queue space. And then you get up to the counter back there and it would be like a Chipotle or Moe's style service. As you can see, they completely took away the little Chipotle Moe's style counter back there. And now you just queue in the front, order at these little kiosks, and then pick up your stuff in the back, which is kind of weird because this is supposed to be primarily that Mexican style build your own burrito or build your own nachos kind of deal. Uh, but that'll be harder to do when you're at a counter when you can't see all the stuff in front of you. They've also added cheeseburgers and chicken tenders permanently now, so yeah. So here's the menu has actually been reconfigured completely. So now your options for Mexican food are street corn kale salad or black bean taco stuffed sweet potato. Looks like they got rid of the traditional Chipotle or Moe's style uh, nacho and or burrito bar, which sucks because that was the best thing that they had here. Um, but I guess we'll try what's new before we judge. Too much so yeah you can see the space is all in the front now they've also they used to have the drink machines against that back wall uh, they've moved the drink machines outside to free up some more space in here for queuing and ordering so we'll go see those in a second but yeah so it's looking like in here now they didn't change much else the uh, ceiling decorations and stuff all the same which is good you can see the drop in the ceiling there. There used to be a second room back there with the drink machine. Now just one big room. There's actually two different lines here. So just based on what door you go in, you get sorted into one line or the other. It looks like I got the longer one, but that's all right. Still not too long today. I got the menus up on the wall back there like I used to, but I also have them on these brand new kiosks. So you can see right when you order. So yeah, like I said, this all used to be key space, these kiosks stands are brand new and you can see the counters back there they're just counters now whereas they used to have where you go down the line to build your nachos or whatever i can't pinpoint exactly what it is but just looking around in here it feels a little bit less cozy than before i don't know if it's because it's a bigger more open room but i don't know it's still a really nice space it's still nicer than most theme park restaurants once we order we step back into this waiting area until our name is called uh, the mexican stuff is cooked to order whereas the other stuff they just had out so if you want to get your food right away you get a cheeseburger and chicken tenders but i got the mexican thing so. so here's where they moved the uh, drink machines still four of them i think they're the exact same drink machines that were inside but they just moved from outside here i did not get a drink today but there they are you want them out of the seating area i'm gonna go out in the sun very small touch but over by blazing fury there's a new piece of theming, that little water wagon. It's not much, but it definitely adds a little bit to the area. It's the longest Blazing Fury line that I've seen in quite some time. I guess it's also worth noting that they reworked Market Square here. So the right side is Market Square Big Skillet, like it's always been. The left side is now Market Square Potatoes. So they're now selling these potato tornadoes, which is interesting. And then on the right side, they're just selling potato skillets. Unfortunately, it appears that the cheesesteak has bit the dust. Very sad. 
So yeah, that's about it for the 2023 changes that I noticed in those two days. I'm sure there are some things that I missed or was mistaken on because it's a big park and it's easy to forget what's new and what's old sometimes. But if you're interested in more Dollywood content, be sure to subscribe because this is my home park, so I'm there a lot. But I hope to include a lot of other general theme park and general amusement industry content on this channel as well. Of course, with a lot of roller coasters because coasters are overall the best type of amusement ride and that is not up for debate. So again, I hope you consider subscribing and leave a like on the video if you thought this stuff was interesting to see and otherwise I hope to catch a ride with you again very soon.